We start today with some big news about the country to my south, the USA. Today was the inauguration of President Barack Obama, which kicks off his second term in office. This follows his win of the presidential election towards the end of last year. So like all the presidents before him and himself in 2009, he repeated the official words, spoke to him, and then happiness and cheering ensued. But one of my favorite parts about this entire event is this photo here. Do you see anything wrong with it? How about now? Yep, that's a mighty fine photobomb going on right there, courtesy of Chuck Schumer. Now, maybe he wasn't trying to photobomb the picture. I imagine he's probably just trying to get a better view of what was happening, but hey, it looks pretty funny. This reminds me of another photobomb that happened towards the end of Obama's campaign last year. Do you guys remember the flag lady? She was the one who stuck an American flag in her hair, and she just happened to be in the camera shot when President Barack Obama was giving his speech. Good times, <laughs> good times. Well, I hope the next four years of Obama's presidency go well, and really, I have nothing else to say about U.S. politics. So from the U.S., let's travel down under to New Zealand. The reason I'm talking about New Zealand today is because over the weekend, one of their more famous inhabitants launched his next great website. The person I'm talking about is Kim.com. You may remember remember him from the mega upload days. Well, he's back and he showed that off in a rather interesting way. He threw a huge launch party in his backyard to talk to journalists about the launch of his next great website called Mega. Mega is a new cloud service similar to that of Mega Upload, but this time he assured everyone that it's safe and works within the legal laws, meaning it shouldn't get shut down anytime soon. The launch party itself was rather amazing too. There's a link to it in the description below, but one of the things you'll notice right off the bat is that everything seems like a Dr. Evil type of setup. Remember Dr. Evil from the Austin Powers movies? If not, you're really missing out. But if you have seen them, then personally, I have to say that Kim.com almost kind of seems like Dr. Evil's long lost son. At first he comes out on stage surrounded by girls and then he's very theatrical about the launch. At times he even yells and everything seems to come to a complete stop. After watching the two hour broadcast, I came to realize he isn't evil. He just has a very interesting view on the world and the internet as a whole. He believes in a free and open internet, something that's not affected by governments and copyright law. It's interesting to hear him talk about it and personally it's kind of inspiring. Getting back to Mega, this new site like Mega Upload can hold many files in an encrypted system online. He made a big point of stating this that no one else besides the uploader would have access to the content. There are free memberships on the site and there are also pro memberships. The pro memberships start at $10 a month for 500 gigs of online storage, which of course is totally encrypted. This is a pretty good price if you look at what other online storage competitors are offering. Besides the $10 plan, there's also a $20 a month plan, which includes two terabytes of online storage and a $30 a month plan, which includes four terabytes. And because Mega's trying to be nice, you can actually get yearly subscriptions that save you some money. It's going to be interesting to see how the site does and if it gets shut down once again. But this won't be the last time we'll be hearing about Mega. They have plans to release a hardware device called the Mega Box that will interface with Mega and add some functionality. So we'll have to see what that's like when it's available in the future. Since we're on the topic of the internet, let's talk about North Korea. You might be thinking, how on earth is North Korea and the internet connected? Well, recently Eric Schmidt and his daughter were invited to North Korea to talk about the internet and connectivity. I'm not gonna be talking about the meetings because not much information has actually surfaced about that online. I'm gonna be talking about how Eric Schmidt's daughter actually felt throughout the entire trip. On a quite lengthy blog post, she actually talks about her entire trip to the communist country and what it was like to experience it firsthand. First, she talks about arriving in North Korea and being on the only inbound passenger aircraft for the day, which of course is pretty strange considering there are thousands of flights in the sky above North America on any given time. She also talked about how the country appeared to be stuck in a Soviet Union era and also about the eerie feeling that at all times they're being watched and listened to. When staying at a private hotel that they were the only guests at, which is kind of weird of course, they didn't have access to cell phones or alarm clocks so it was actually impossible for them to wake up on time and to know if anyone else was even up yet. They joked about saying that when you wake up, simply yell, I'm awake, because the room is probably bugged, so someone will come and get them anyway. While they were there, they toured a library where people were actually simply sitting at computers, but doing nothing. Just sitting there, some were scrolling up and down on the page, while others were simply staring blankly at the screen. Another interesting thing about this is she noted that they weren't particularly quiet, like the group that she was in when they entered the room. But at no time did anyone sitting at the computers even look up or turn their heads to see who had entered the room and what was going on. Which if you really think about it is a basic human function. Like we think about like, is there a predator behind us? But nope, these people were like brainwashed just to sit. 
still. All of the places they visited were actually prearranged, and one of the ways that they knew this was because when they entered a fast food joint, the people actually weren't even ready yet. They quickly turned on the lights and donned aprons. Eric Schmidt's daughter's account of the country and the trip was quite fascinating. I highly recommend reading it. She mentioned so many interesting things and you get an eerie sense about the country. You can check out the full blog post for yourself. There's a link to it in the description below, along with all the other articles I talk about today. So that last story is a little hard to beat, but we have to move on to little tech news. And if you don't already know, Eric Schmidt served as the CEO of Google for from 2001 to 2011. Well, Sergey Brin was one of those people who actually founded Google, but now he works in the X Labs at Google. The X Labs are responsible for that awesome Google self-driving car and, well, the gadget that I and many nerds alike want to get our hands on, Google Glass. Google Glass is the heads-up display system being developed by Google. But recently, over the weekend, Sergey was spotted out in public with the device on his head. You can see him here just riding the subway like any normal person, mind you, of course, wearing Google Glass. This isn't the first time he's appeared in public with them on. Actually, more often than none when he's spotted out and about he's actually wearing the Google Glass device which acts as a mobile phone just right in front of your eye. The assumption is that he's testing out the glasses before the launch of them sometime next year. Personally I can't wait for Google Glass to come out. I'm gonna be one of those first people to pre-order this thing when it's available. And last an update for all of you don't forget the Sims 3 70s 80s and 90s stuff pack launches tomorrow in North America so be sure to head out and pick that up also, don't forget to sign up for the SimCity beta happening this weekend. And another little thing today was the launch of my new gaming channel, Paradise Gaming. So be sure to head over there and check that channel out for my new SimCity 4 video that I posted. Also, don't forget to subscribe to that channel because I'll be uploading more videos on that channel throughout the week. So as you can see, today was a crazy day for news. So many interesting things to talk about. But let's jump back to the story about North Korea. Given the chance to visit that country and assuming you'll return home safe, would you actually go there to visit? I think personally I would, just because it would be amazing to see what that country was like. Mind you, it would probably be a little bit scary too. Tell me your thoughts in the comments section below, or of course you can let me know on my Facebook page, Twitter, or Google+. Links to all that and the other topics I talked about in today's episode in the description below. Once you're done commenting, don't forget to click the subscribe button below as well. It should be down there. That way all of the newest episodes of now will get sent straight to you. Then you can click the like button because you like this video, you like the content in it, or you like me. One of the three. I'm Curtis Parody, and that's what's happening now.